Hey, Tywin. Uh, coming in, obviously, you're the veteran, you know, with Bellator, and he's coming in with an undefeated record. I'm curious how your experience, not just inside the promotion, but inside your career, has kind of set you up to welcome this challenge of an undefeated young fighter who believes he's the best in the world. Can I hear me? Yeah, yeah, he said he's best 145 in the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that my experience is about to allow me to let him get a piece of humble pie. You know, uh, I think that he's a tough fighter. He's undefeated. Uh, but I think that we all know that there's a difference inside the Bellator cage. You know, there's a difference between the regional scene and, and uh, you know, one of the best organizations in the world. And there's, there's a difference between, you know, like the atmosphere. There's a difference between uh, being able to maintain your mind and, and stay sharp and stay focused and not get caught up in all the media and, and everything else, all the other obligations that you have to do uh, when you get to this stage and you're on this level. So, uh, and then uh, there's also a difference in, in the competition, you know, like uh, training with hard people is one thing. And then being across the cage from another guy, like a, like a Sanchez or, you know, like a Wilson is a, a completely different animal or, or like a Claxton, you know, being, being, being across the cage from a guy that's like me or like one of those guys, uh, will let you know real fast that, you always have room to grow, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to welcoming the best 145 pounder in the world uh, to Bellator come Friday night. Abraham, hey Taiwan, um, your your opponent has predicted a second or third round finish. What do you have to say to that? Especially since you have fought, like you mentioned, top tier competition like Sanchez and Wilson. And do you have any predictions on this fight to counter his argument? Oh, well, we both think that there's going to be a finish, you know, so uh, I can agree with him on that. Uh, but, you know, him thinking that there's going to be a second or third round finish, uh, that I think that just lets lets me know that, hey, maybe he's not going to be prepared for, for a war. You know, anytime you think that you're going to finish a guy, uh, you're either really confident in your skills or, or you're doubting his skills, right? So it's one or the other. I just know that I'm going to be the best version of myself, and uh, I don't think that he'll be ready to handle the best version of myself. He can say what he want to say, but I'm about to beat his ass. You know, I think that's – whether it's the second round or the third round or the first round, uh, I'm going to make sure he knows too. I'm going to make sure he knows that he ain't going to finish nobody, that he's going to get this top chin up. So uh, I guess that's what I have to say to, to him saying that he's going to finish me. No, the only person that, that said that and actually was able to do it was Sanchez. And, hey, hats off to him. But uh, he ain't amazing, Sanchez. So. Thank you for your time. Ryan? How's it going? Taiwan Ryan from Chaos MMA. Now you're going out there facing undefeated fighters, making his Bellator debut. How much does that motivate you to go out there and give him his first loss? I knew this fight was coming year ago you know uh i knew this fight was coming right after the jj wilson fight he knew this fight was coming a year ago uh and and since then i've dealt with a lot of things outside of fighting and uh also dealt with a lot of things that i need to deal with inside of the cage as well uh being at elevation and being with my new team so uh you know it, it's always good to have been through the fire both inside the gym and and inside of a real fight and uh, to understand what it really takes to come out there and get the W and get after it. So, you know, the guy's never lost before. Of course, he's going to be confident. But at the end of the day, like, I think that we both know that there's levels and that he hasn't fought anybody on this level. So uh, it's going to feel good. I'm going to give him his first loss for sure. You know, I, I, I love the fact that you guys are telling me that he thinks he's the best and that he's going to stop me and this and that. It's like you can say what you want to say, but at the end of the day, I'm going to beat your ass, you know, and, and I feel confident enough to say that. So uh, like, it's either going to be me finishing him or it's going to be a really, really good fight. 
it would be one of the best fights in Bellator history. But I know the best version of myself is coming uh, a Friday night, so that's always good. Jeff? Jeff Brantley, the Man in the Cage podcast. Uh, last time out, you fell just short, of course, against J.J. Wilson. Uh, coming out of that fight, what did you learn from that performance, and did you work on anything specific in this training camp? You mentioned uh, your team this time around. I mean, was there anything specific you worked on coming into this fight against Justin? Uh, yeah, just staying mentally engaged the entire round, staying mentally engaged the entire fight. Uh, you know, there's a lot of technical things that we worked on. Uh, which helped me stay mentally engaged. Uh, a lot of different barriers that we crossed. But um, I think that just just having a year with my with my team, having a year of sparring with Terrence and Banks, having a year of sparring with Justin Gagey, having a year of sparring with Corey Sanhagen, you know, uh, Drew Dober, you know, you name all these. I can name guys off, you know, left and right. You You've seen – what I've done inside the Bellator cage before I moved to Elevation, uh, you know, and um, my amateur record speaks for itself when I was in Florida with the Black Stallions, but I think that, you know, for the first half of my uh, professional career, being in Cleveland and kind of running a team and, you know, doing a little bit more coaching and not so much competing, and, you know, uh, I still came out here and I gave, I gave a good show, and so uh, I just know that now, you know, it's in a, I'm in a different spot. I'm in a different spot physically. I'm in a different spot mentally. Uh, I'm in a different place in my entire life. So, uh, you know, I, it, it's 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 gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off. He's he's gonna get a whole new fighter, and I think that uh, I think that it'll be surprised. You go look at any fight I've lost or any wrestling match that I've lost. And you can I always come back with a different type of intensity and fire because I hate losing more than I like winning. And, and so I do things that I necessarily don't feel like doing, don't want to do. I would skip out on them, you know, going, picking hard rounds, making sure I've got everything right. So uh, he's going to be in for a rude awakening. It's going to be a, a whole different person. Thanks, Taiwan. Good luck Friday night. Thank you. All right, we'll take a couple more here. Dylan? Hey there, Taiwan. Appreciate you making some time. No worries. I was just curious. I mean, a lot's made about the you know alterations with the camp and stuff like that. I'm kind of curious. How have you been keeping up with like any of the coding endeavors as of late? So uh, actually, I have. I've been coding a lot, uh, but for this fight camp for the past nine weeks, um, my team convinced me to be one tracked. Uh, while I'm in fight camp. So usually I'll get up, I'll code for three or four hours, and then I'll go train, go eat, go train, go eat, and then go back home and maybe code or maybe chill, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, but this camp, my coaches are like, hey, man, you know, can you can you cut the coding down to just the weekend? And, and I was like, ah, you know, I, I'm not sure. You know, like, everything that I do in this life, I do for money, you know, like, I fight for money. I code because it pays. You know, like, I don't do anything to be the necessarily the best. Like, I'm not looking to get a belt. If I do get a belt or I do get a title shot, I'm, of course, I'm going to look to be the best version of myself, you know, uh, that day. And uh, that's that. But throughout this camp, I've been doing, like, maybe on a Wednesday, which is one of my lighter days, I do, like, an hour. You know, and then maybe on a Saturday, I do, like, an hour. But, like, I, I took off, like, minimum. I used to have minimum hours that I was going to code a day. Uh, and so now I don't have any minimum, or at least while I'm in camp, I don't have a minimum. And I've, I've cut my coding down, you know, 98% just because, you know, that's something that my coaches asked me to do. And I said, all right, you know, I will I'll give it a shot. You know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll see what happens when we're, when we're one track. You know, we'll, we'll see how much growth we can have. So. I've actually been really, really, really laxed on, on my code. Awesome. Thanks for the insights, man. All right. Last one here. Maria? Hi, Taiwan. Maria Morales with Roybo's podcast. I got two questions for you really quickly, and I want to start with the one uh, that you kind of talked about a bit ago uh, as far as your mental preparation. So 
you said that coming off of the loss to Wilson, you know, that was one of the key areas that you needed to focus on. What exactly, um, or can you share maybe some of the things that you did to help improve like that mental awareness during the fight and, and to improve your mental game? I think just the change in camp and constantly taking tips from guys that are at the top of their game. Uh, you know, taking and taking bits and pieces from each person and making it my own. Uh, so, you know, like San Hagen's added some stuff to my game. Gage has added some stuff. Banks has added some stuff. Uh, of course, my coaches have added different little things to my game. So uh, just kind of taking bits and pieces from different people and, and being a student again and being willing to learn and compete at the same time. So uh, I think that's helped me make a mental transformation. And the last one for me, you know, obviously the, the, the reason that the saying that you never want to leave it in the judge's hands is because sometimes it doesn't go your way. Uh, and coming off a split decision loss to Wilson and, and hearing that your opponent has always already predicted how this fight is going to end, how important is it to you to get a finish? And how do you think or how would you like to predict that that finish would happen? I think that it's not important for me to get a finish. You know, it's just important for me to go out there and be the best best version of myself, push myself. Uh, I think if I'm the best version of myself, he'll break me, you know. So that's the most important thing is, is, is battling the things that go on inside of myself, being inside of myself. So, uh, you know, it's not that important for me to go out and get a finish. I think that by going out there and being the best version of myself, the finish will come, if that makes sense.